The countdown is underway. Colorado's first ever recall election is set for September 10th, the day voters will decide whether two state senators, John Morse and Angela Harone, will lose their jobs. Volunteers working nonstop in this recall effort will be the first to tell you this is about more than the senator's support for several gun bills, including limiting ammunition magazines to 15 rounds and expanding background checks. As they told me, this is about these senators refusing to listen to their constituents and instead trying to shut them out of the legislative process. Take a look. We just have to stay away from some of this toxicity. We get the point that some of these folks think their Second Amendment rights are being abridged. I obviously support the Second Amendment, and I don't think this is an infringement on it. There's only so much they can ram down your throat before you end up getting sick of it and spitting it back out. This toxicity, we got together. Six guys who never been involved in politics before. I have never been politically active before in my life. We are regular guys. We're tradesmen. We're plumbers, electricians. I work in the oil field, and before I got started in this, I didn't think I could do anything. I thought I was just one person, and that's completely, completely wrong. I spent six years as a paratrooper in the 82nd Airborne Division and a little over two years in Iraq, and I saw other countries that don't have the kinds of freedoms that we do, and so I know that this is extremely important, not just here in Pueblo, but across the nation. We have to keep our freedoms intact. But in a word, what we're trying to get is accountability for their actions, their votes. We're fed up. It's not just the gun laws. It's all of our rights being eroded. I think their Second Amendment rights are being abridged. We're not gun nuts. The number one reason I got up off my couch was because Senator Morse stated that he was not going to listen to what I and my neighbors had to say. It's not worth getting into that argument with them, and so just move along. And that's what I tell my, my senators as well. And I'll tell you what's so important about the recall effort on Morris. I was there in that room for 13 hours waiting to testify. And by the end, I still wasn't able to, and neither were hundreds of other people. Morris was the president of the Senate. Morris is the one that gave the final okay on the manipulation of the rules, and those rules which were designed to keep law-abiding citizens, residents of Colorado, from being heard by their electors. He even told his caucus, do not answer phone calls, do not respond to emails. I was shocked at what I was seeing. It's a wake-up call. This was a chance for us to say, yeah, no more. You not only have the ability, you have the right to tell these politicians, if you don't listen to me, you are gone. I can fire you. This is precisely what recalls are for. Senator Morris has forgotten his past and he's forgotten his constituents. We have more petitioners signed than actually voted for him. That's what it's all about. That's what we're doing. We're trying to clean house, get rid of the people that don't listen to us, and overturn the laws that should have never been put in place in the first place. It's a joke. If we do sell this in the state of Colorado, we can't give them the magazine. It can't be anything over 15 rounds. Without a doubt, I really have represented the constituency. Yes, I feel very strongly that I have represented my constituents and represented them very well. Senator Morris is a liar. They have been nothing but toxic to the Second Amendment and gun rights in general. The government shouldn't be able to tell me how many rounds my magazine can hold. I don't think their ego allows them to think about it. The armed citizens are our last line of defense. They are not the problem. It's the illegal carriers that are law enforcement's problem. The legal carriers, they will back us up here in the city if need be. This is an effort to make our state safer in the long run. My opinion, it's an absolute agenda of citizens' disarmament. It's absolutely an agenda. The legislation to be run by people that want to create a different society for Colorado. Colorado's a society of hunters. We are the West. And people that prohibit us from owning our guns, that's a problem. John Moores, chief of police, a life spent fighting crime. He hasn't spent his life fighting crime. We're disgusted. Just because he used to wear the uniform a long time ago does not mean he represents us. We do not have his back. What bothers you most about these gun laws that Senator Morris supported? He's creating more laws that are unenforceable, yet he wants to let people out of prison. So I think you're creating a scale that can't be balanced. These are not laws that benefit the law-abiding citizen. They actually target law-abiding citizens. It's the people who are left defenseless. I'm law-abiding. As a mom, it's my job to protect my kids. And with the new magazine laws and the new transfer laws, it was making it harder to do. And it shouldn't be hard to protect your kids. We work very hard to put people away. And when John Morris, in particular, is making laws to make felonies into misdemeanors, that means they walk. And that is a slap on the wrist. That's all it is. And then it just encourages the criminal to keep on doing it. Senator Morris has never been a friend of law enforcement. 
Colorado was the test case for gun control on a national level. Bloomberg money has been pushing this entire issue from the start. We know Biden called all the Democrats in the House and said, hey, vote for this. This is what the party wants. This was bought and paid for before it even happened. My message to Mayor Bloomberg is to stay out of Colorado. Keep your money, leave our rights alone. They say it's not about the money. Well, when you're a billionaire, you're right, it's not about the money. But when you're a small town, yeah, it's about the money. You have companies like Magpul that are pulling out of Colorado because of this ban. It's a billion dollar corporation. Do they forget to where their tax revenues come from? These gun owners here in Colorado tell me they're not the only ones affected by these gun laws. Because in the end, even if you don't own a gun, we all pay a price when our individual freedoms are at stake. I want people to realize that Colorado is the epicenter of the changes that have to come to our country. And when we show up by the thousands to say no, and they have the power to do it anyway, that should chill and terrify every citizen. I think this is the best civics lesson I could have for my boys. This is democracy in action, how one person can make a difference. It's not about me. It really is about our kids. I'm responsible. I am the steward of my children's rights. So they can continue to hunt and shoot and have the values that we appreciate, really. We got together and we did the impossible. And anybody who's watching this, they can too. All they have to do is get up and get involved. That's it. But who would have thought four months ago just a couple regular guys would get together and throw a huge wrench into that big political machine. Something that they couldn't stop, they couldn't squash. With everything they tried, we just kept on going. I think it points to our success already. Hi, good evening. We've done more with very little money than they've done with millions. If somebody doesn't want to listen to our constituents, the people that put her in office, then I believe they do need to be recalled. And I think Bloomberg, our president and the vice president, realize they stored a hornet's nest they did not anticipate. And they're gonna spend a lot of money to try to protect those two people. Remember, we need your vote on September 10th. I felt incredibly betrayed. This is about stopping an increased pace of government overreach. We have sent a message to not only the legislators in Denver, but also to other state legislators around the country and to Washington, D.C., that there is a price to pay. If you're not representing them, I'll represent your people. Then it's time for you to go. This is Colorado history for sure. 137 years of the state, there's never been a sitting legislator recalled. So when we get it done, our names are going down. This is it, folks. We have to vote. You cannot stay home. We the people need to stand up and reclaim those rights. If we do not, we will not have our rights. To sacrifice liberty and rights at the sake of safety is the demise of a country. And that's what's at stake.